One common way to define transparency for a layer is using color keying. Color keying uses pixels of a certain color and makes all pixels of that color transparent. Let's see how this works. In the compositing project, choose manongreen.mov in the project panel and drag it to the new composition icon. Do a quick RAM preview. We can see that this is a short movie of a man spinning in front of a green screen. If you have the foresight to shoot your movie in front of a green screen, then you can tell After Effects to take all of these green pixels and make them transparent so that you can composite your actor in front of another background. Let's try first to simply apply the key light effect to this layer. Enter key light in the search field in the effects and presets panel, and then drag the key light effect onto the layer. Use the screen color eyedropper and pick a shade of green very near the actor. Notice, looking in the info panel, that the green value here is 0 0.9255, but if we move out here, it's 0 0.6314. In other words, this is not an evenly colored screen. You always want to choose a color very near your subject. And there, we've keyed out the green. So, we're done, right? Unfortunately, not quite. Let's zoom in and take a better look. I'll turn on the transparency grid for the moment. If we zoom in and look at this logo, we can see when we position the mouse pointer over the logo that the alpha channel values are not 1.0. They're 0.9, even down to 0.88. In some areas, even down to 0.85. So, in this area right here, we have a little bit more work to do. If I zoom back out and look up here, we'll notice that the alpha channel values are not 0 0.000 as they should be, but instead 0 0.1490, almost up to 0 0.2 in some areas. We're going to take care of both of these problems using some best practices for keying. We don't need to worry about these areas out here far away from our subject if we draw a garbage mat. And we don't need to worry about these areas within the core of our subject if we use a holdout mat. Let's begin with a garbage mat. I'll delete the key light effect and we'll start over. So I'll begin by duplicating this layer. And on the bottom layer, I'm going to draw a very simple garbage mat. I'm going to press page down a couple of times until I get the man facing straight on because that's where he has the greatest horizontal extent here in the image. So here, I'm just going to draw near him. I don't have to be precise. The point here is to just define an area that the key light effect is going to have to focus on. I don't want the key light effect to have to worry about all of the green that is far away from the subject. I want it to be able to concentrate on just the green that is very near him. I'll turn off the top layer here. And there. Now we can see just inside of our garbage mat. I'll do a quick preview by dragging back and forth to make sure that no part of the man sticks out during any part of this rotation. And now, let's apply the key light effect. And choosing green very near him. So this has taken care of one problem. It means that this area out here all has perfect zero alpha. Let's zoom in. And a little bit more. And here we still have some areas that we need to deal with. Let's go to View, Screen Mat, and notice that we have some gray areas here where these should be all black. If you drag the screen gain just a little bit until this becomes pure black, that can make that problem go away. 
and you don't want to go too far with this, just far enough. That looks pretty good. Now notice, you can also see the problem of the logo by looking at the screen mat. You can even read the logo there. So we'll use a holdout mat for this part. A holdout mat is an image that you overlay on top of a keyed result to preserve a certain part of the image. Let's see how this works. I'll double click on the top layer and put the current time indicator at the beginning. And then we'll use the rotor brush tool. Dragging in the layer panel with the rotor brush tool while holding the control key or command key on Mac OS allows us to change the brush size right there in the layer. I'll drag down here and make my brush size a little bit smaller. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to press the accent key. That's the key above the tab key and below the escape key on a standard US keyboard. That maximizes the layer so I have more room to work. And I'll press page down just to go through one frame at a time and check the results. Doesn't look very good down here, so we'll zoom in. Make the brush quite a lot smaller by control dragging. And holding the Alt key or Option key on Mac OS, we get the red pointer that tells us that when we drag, we'll be defining background, not foreground. There, that's quite a bit better. That's about as good as we're going to get there. And zoom back out. Just touch up this area on the side of the leg here. And go ahead another frame at a time. We don't have to be pixel perfect here because we're just going to be using this for the core, not the edges. Make the brush a little bit bigger. And we're almost done. All right. So I'll press the accent key again to return the panels to their regular size. And then I'll choke this a lot, meaning bringing the segmentation in. So we're pulling this in from the edges quite a lot so that we just preserve the core. Now, if I go back to the composition, select the layer with key light, have it show final result. Now we still have our holdout layer turned off. Notice the alpha of 0 0.90 here. Now if we turn the holdout layer on, the alpha is pure 1.0. Perfect. So zoom out. And here we see that we have a problem with our holdout mat, which is that it wasn't doing a good job with the hair at all. So we can go back to our holdout mat. And here, just draw a mask, excluding the entire top here, saying that we're not going to use the holdout mat from the top part of the body. Then go back to the composition. And Press Control Shift H to not show the mask. And there.
Now we aren't using the holdout mat at all for the top part of the body here, but we are using it down below. I'll press page up a couple times. And this looks pretty good. Oh, we have a bit of an issue here as well, where because we didn't spend a lot of time on the holdout mat on the hand, it's also causing some problems here. So we can go back to the holdout mat and do the same thing here that we did for the face. Just, just say, not use that part. And we might as well do it for the other hand too. And another way to go about this, since all we really cared about was the pants, would be to just draw a mask around the pants and have those be add. Like so. So now if we go back, we can see that the pants have the perfect 1.0 alpha around the logo, but our holdout mat isn't being used for the hands or for the hair. I'll zoom out just a little bit so we can see the entire body. And just drag through to see the whole thing. Looks pretty good. You should check out more advanced videos on using key light to work on such things as despill to remove the green spill coming from the screen and reflecting off of the body. But we won't cover that for now. The important thing to note was that in order to use key light properly, we didn't just apply the effect and use the eyedropper. We needed to use a garbage mat and we needed to use a holdout mat. You don't always need to use either a garbage mat or a holdout mat. The point is that sometimes you need to build your mat up piece by piece using different methods for different parts of the image, depending on what's called for given the imagery.